हेलो एवरी वन माई नेम इज़ मानसी आनंद एंड आई एम गोन बी टेकिंग योर मार्केटिंग लेक्चर सो इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोन टॉक अबाउट मार्केटिंग स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर्मुलेशन एंड इफ यू लाइक दिस वीडियो देन प्लीज डू सब्सक्राइब टू आर चैनल एंड यू गोन गेट लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स रिलेटेड टू मेनी सब्जेक्ट्स दैट वुड बी हेल्पफुल टू यू इन प्रिपरेशन ऑफ मेनी एग्जाम्स यू कैन ऑल्सो ज्वाइन आर टेलीग्राम ग्रुप फॉर सच लेटेस्ट अपडेट्स बिगिन विद मार्केटिंग स्ट्रैटेजी फॉर्मुलेशन सो Before starting up with marketing strategy formulation, we should understand what is the meaning of the word strategy. So, strategy is nothing but it is a game plan for getting somewhere or achieving your goals or objectives. So, when you have an exam in a week, what do you do? You usually try to strategize your subjects. You try to allocate your time to different subjects, and you try to divide that. Yes, if I have got a week, I'm going to devote. Two days to this subject, three days to this subject, according to your strengths and weaknesses in a particular subject. So a company does the same. They also analyze their strengths and weaknesses, and after that, work on a strategy that would help them to achieve their goals. So strategy is nothing but a game plan for achieving your goals. So basically, goals are the end results where a company wants to reach. and strategy is a game plan for getting there so michael potter said that strategy is the creation of unique and valuable position involving different set of activities so you have to create a position unique and valuable to the company and and it involves set of activities which a company has to perform to reach its goals potter also said that a company is said to be strategized when it performs different activities from its rivals so a company as has to analyze what activities are being performed by its competitors and then try to perform some activities which are different or more efficient from its competitors so that it can have a valuable position in the market or if the company wants to perform the similar activities that the rivals are performing then it would have to perform them in a different manner so performing different activities from rivals or performing the same activities in a different manner this is what strategy is all about so after understanding the meaning of strategy let's proceed further to potter's generic strategies so michael potter he proposed three generic strategies which we are going to discuss now so number first of them is cost leadership so as the name in itself suggests so here the company tries to achieve leadership in providing a low cost product to consumers so here the main focus of company is on availing the economies of scale the benefits of large scale production so that it can produce a low cost product and then try to pull consumer towards its product so the features of cost leadership are lowest production and distribution cost so not only in production but the company tries to minimize in costs in different activities such as distribution promotion planning executing those plans so basically the company tries to minimize its cost in every activity it has to perform so so the company tries to beat its competitors by underpricing it and winning the market share so underpricing is the main word here so the company tries to underprice charge lesser prices than its rivals to pull the consumer towards itself so here not much marketing skills are needed because the focus is on cost leadership that is why the company tries to minimize marketing expenses so that it can keep the cost at its lowest so but here there is a problem your competitors might do the same they might also charge lesser prices and try to pull the customers towards itself so cost leadership can result in price wars between companies between different competitors each trying to underprice the other one but here the one thing that the company has to take care is that it should at least charge a price which would fulfill its objectives it should not happen that the company is charging a lower price but its objectives its profitability objectives are not getting fulfilled so this might result in company going bankrupt in the long run so the, this 
strategy of underpricing cannot go on for long unless and until the company has full proof techniques to minimize its cost and at the same time maintain its profit margin so company should try to look for its financial objectives a very good example of cost leadership is arvind eye care which belongs to madurai in tamil nadu so arvind eye care system it was found by dr govindappa venkatswami so what the system does it this system tries to focus upon providing medical treatments to poor people who cannot afford medical treatments and tries to treat their cataract so cataract in india is one of the main causes of blindness so dr venkata swami the founder of arvind eye care he wanted to reduce unnecessary blindness in the country and for that he aimed towards building a system which would provide affordable medical treatment to poor people so they aim to do this by performing cataract surgeries on a very large scale which reduces their costs and in turn the customer or the consumer gets medical treatment at a minimum price at a minimum level simultaneously maintaining the quality of medical treatment so now moving towards second strategy that is differentiation so differentiation it concentrates on achieving superior performance in an important customer benefit area valued by a large part of market share firm seek quality leadership and effectively communicate their quality so here the focus was on reducing costs by performing on a large scale or focusing on quantity focusing on the quantity of production of the product but here in differentiation the main focus of the company is on quality of the product they try to target a niche market understand their needs and then develop a value of it which would have value for the customer so differentiation basically works on attaining specialization by repeatedly performing a single task or by repeatedly catering to needs of a particular target market so here in differentiation the company they try to set a target audience and then understand their needs fully and then cater to them and they try to improve their performance provide best quality value offerings to that particular segment only and attain quality leadership in marketing said so in order to minimize cost they do not compromise with their quality here cost does not matter that much as it did in cost leadership here the main focus is on quality so here the company tries to make products with best components put them together expertly minimize any error and make the consumer aware about the quality of products so if we are talking about healthcare system in india we first talk about talked about arvind eye care system so now we can take the example of narayana rudale this is also a hospital providing medical treatment but its focus lies on cardiology so here we can see that there is differentiation they have targeted one set of customers that is people suffering from heart problems and they try to provide best medical treatment to them or provide best value offering to those particular set of target members or target consumers so the company should not only seek quality leadership but effectively communicate their quality to consumer next the third strategy is focus so companies trying to follow focus they can use any of the earlier strategies we discussed that is cost leadership and differentiation so in focus the companies they focus on a really narrow segment of target audience gets to know them really intimately and then pursues either cost leadership or differentiation within that particular target segment so in differentiation the company tries to focus on quality but in focus first of all the company narrows down its set of target customers and those set of target customers are really 
streamlined so that the company can understand them properly so the lesser the amount of target audience the easier it would be to understand them so when it gets to know them intimately about their needs about their desires about the qualities or the services they seek in a product then they either follow cost differentiation in that particular narrow segment or differentiation within that particular narrow segment earlier in cost leadership this was for mass market in differentiation also although the company segments the target audience but caters to still large number of consumers but here the company focuses on really narrow audience so i hope you're clear with porter's generic strategies these three strategies are one of the most important strategies that a marketer has to follow or choose one of them to pursue his or her interests now moving on to strategic alliances so in order to achieve its objective a company should maintain good long term relationships with different partners that it deals with those partners can be suppliers distributors or different people involved in value chain services so a company cannot perform in isolation it needs the support it needs the help of all the parties in the value chain so that it can fulfill its objectives and perform on a better level so one really good example of strategic alliance is star alliance so star alliance is a group of 28 airlines including known names like lufthansa singapore airlines so these airlines they come together to share their resources to maximize their strengths and minimize their weaknesses in order to perform the customers with superior customer value so basically they are working in a group they are coordinating within themselves so that they can perform on a better level so strategic alliance is nothing but forming the alliance to perform better so when you have to study for a subject that you are not really good at what do you do you try to contact one of your friends who is good at that subject and try to seek his or her help and in turn you promise to help him or her in a subject which you are good at but he or she might not be so this is what companies do in strategic alliance so you are forming an alliance with your friend and similarly companies form alliances with different other parties with other companies to fulfill the objectives so moving on to the types of alliances number first is product or service alliance so here what a company does is it licenses another company to promote its product or two companies which complement each other they both try to promote their product or they both try to get involved in the production process jointly to create a new product trying to capitalize on their strengths and minimizing errors by offsetting their weaknesses those of you who have ever shopped online would have seen offers by brands like mintra so when you open the product that you like you see information about that if you would pay through this bank's credit card you're going to get this much of cash back so here what the credit card company or the bank is doing it is collaborating with mintra and trying to jointly capitalize on their resources and trying to jointly cater to the needs of the consumer and making a profitable venture out of it next promotional alliances here companies agree to carry out promotion for another companies or they jointly carry out promotion for their products so here companies were producing the product jointly and here they are promoting the product jointly so one really good example is mcdonald's using disney characters to promote its own products as well as promoting disney simultaneously so whenever a new disney movie comes out be it shrek be it frozen mcdonald's uses characters like shrek and elsa and anna to cater to customers so to basically pull the customers towards its own 
outlet so that the Disney movie is promoted on one hand and on the other hand the sales of McDonald's also rise. Moving on to third alliance that is logistics alliance. So one company offers logistical services for another company's products. I think this would be clear to you with the help of one of the examples. So there is a company in India called Gati Limited and Gati Limited it is a courier company. So it provides supply chain services to another company. So Gati Limited has teamed up with Meridian Mobile Private Limited for providing value chain services like procurement, warehousing, inventory management, distribution and many more. So what Gati Limited does is it provides supply chain services to other companies so that both of the companies can jointly help each other and, and in the process try to better their services towards their customers. So fourth alliance is pricing collaborations. So here the companies what they do is they join in a special pricing collaboration. So when you, whenever you go to a hotel you must have seen some rental car companies promotional ad there or hotels providing you discount if you book that particular car company to provide you with a car. So here the hotel company and the car rental service company they both are engaging in a mutual price offering to the customer. So the customer would be benefited by a price discount if he or she uses both of the services. Companies would be benefited in a sense that they are getting promoted or they are able to cater to many new customers or increase their sales revenue. So well managed alliances, they allow companies to obtain a greater sales impact at lower costs. Whenever two companies they engage in an alliance, they try to provide each other with their strength and try to offset the other one's weakness with their own strength and tries to offset their own weakness with the other one's strength. So in the process they are able to lower the costs down and provide the value offering to the customer at lesser prices. Or better their quality. So this concept of forming an alliance has come to be known as partner relationship management that is creating and maintaining long term strong relationships with the partners the company deals with so that in turn they can help each other out in performing various activities in improving their financial performance as well as the quality of performance towards their consumers. So one example of partner relationship management would be Vodafone. Vodafone came up with a service known as Betawin. So Betawin was an open source software platform where different content developers they could come and test their apps. So the intellectual property rights of those apps retained with the developer. What Vodafone got out of it was they got to know the latest trends and updates in the innovation world and they got to know that whether latest apps are going to work on its own network or not. So by providing an open source platform to young content developers, Vodafone also made a benefit out of it. Although the service is not active now, but it counts as a good example under partnership relationship management. So moving further to marketing plan. So marketing plan is a very simple topic. Whenever you open a new book, you first turn to its contents to know about the various topics that are covered in that particular book. So marketing plan is somewhat similar to contents or index of a book. So it tells you about, so it helps the marketer to stay on a routine. So a marketing plan, it is a written document that summarizes what the marketer has learned about the marketplace and how the firm plans to reach its marketing objectives. So it is nothing but basically a document providing all the details that how a marketer has to go about to fulfill his or her objectives. So marketing plan contains the following sections. First, the, the executive summary and table of contents. So when a marketer prepares a marketing plan, 
द फर्स्ट स्टेप वुड बी प्रिपेयरिंग एन एग्जीक्यूटिव समरी एंड टेबल ऑफ कॉन्टेंट्स फॉर द सीनियर मैनेजमेंट टू लुक एट सो द सीनियर मैनेजमेंट कैन ओपन दैट मार्केटिंग प्लान एंड लुक एट द कॉन्टेंट्स एंड गेट टू नो अबाउट द बेसिक टॉपिक्स दैट आर गोनो बी कवर्ड इन दैट पर्टिक्युलर प्लान नेक्स्ट सिचुएशन एनालिसिस सो इन सिचुएशन एनालिसिस वोट आर मार्केटर हैज टू डू इज दैट एनालाइज द मैक्रो एनवायरमेंट द बिजनेस इज वर्किंग इन इट इज अ बैकग्राउंड चेक ऑन सेल्स कॉस मार्केट्स एंड कॉम्पिटिटर्स एंड इन दिस स्टेप इट इज ऑल्सो डिफाइन दैट हाउ बिग इज द मार्केट द कंपनी इज ट्राइंग टू केटर टू हाउ फास्ट इज इट ग्रोइंग इज देर एनी ग्रोथ पोटेंशियल हाउ मच प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी कंपनी कैन डिराइव आउट ऑफ इट सो ऑल दो एनालिसिस पार्ट इट इज मोर लाइक रिव्यूइंग योर एनवायरमेंट बिफोर टेकिंग एनी एक्शंस so here in this step the marketer analyzes its environment or before coming up with strategies to fulfill its objectives so here marketer can perform swot analysis to know about the businesses strengths weakness opportunities and threats which are in business environment so the third step is marketing strategy so now the marketer knows what topics he or she has to cover and that person has done an appropriate review or scanning of environment around the business that can affect business in direct and indirect ways so after doing that the marketer can proceed to producing a strategy out of it so in this the marketer defines the mission marketing and financial objectives and the needs the market offering is intended to satisfy as well as its competitive positioning in the market so in this step different decisions are taken by the marketer on different topics on different activities that a marketer has to resort to so here decisions regarding purchasing of raw materials manufacturing of products the budget associated with it the human resources required for it so all those decisions are taken in this step so here basically the plan is prepared in its core form so the last step is financial projections so once a strategy is ready now the marketer has to analyze the financial aspects of that plan it includes a sales forecast an expense forecast and also break even analysis so to provide the senior management with an idea that how this marketing plan is going to work out in its financial sense impact this plan is going to have on the company's profitability so these forecasts can be by month or by product categories so the marketer can make plans regarding that this much revenue is expected to come in this month and this much revenue is expected to come in this month and th these are the expenses for these particular months so the company would be left with this much of profit or it can be on the basis of products this much of revenue is estimated to come from this product this much of revenue is estimated to come from product 2 and these are the expenses related to the manufacturing of these products and at the end the company would be left with the amount of profit that the marketer can estimate in this step so there is also a more complex method included in financial projections that is risk analysis the marketer makes estimates on three situations that is optimistic pessimistic and most likely so this is nothing but the marketer tries to make projections on different different situations that can be happening at different time periods in the market so here the estimates are made on the basis of different different situations and strategies that the marketer would have to play out in different cases are also decided so if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and you're going to get all the latest updates relating to topics that would be helpful to you in many of your exams thank you